Today I'm going to tell you about how we optimize Spike for the Intel Haswell and ARM Cortex N4. This is a joint work with Meeting Chen and Marcus Corps. Spike is one of the several alternate candidates of NIST PQC standardization process. It is a code based CAM based on so called moderate density parity check code which is essentially the same as low-density parity check code. The poly keys of bike uh, are pretty small. Uh, the poly keys are 1.5 kilobytes, 3 kilobytes, and 5 kilobytes for the level 1, level 3, and level 5 parameter sets. And the reason why bike can have small keys is because uh, the construction is entry like uh, some ring structures has been included in uh, bikes construction and bike has been supported in Amazon's AWS key management service so all of this sounds good but unfortunately bike is a relatively slow scheme in the standardization process for example, if you consider bike L1, uh, the level 1 parent set of bike, to the corresponding parent set of classic MACLIS, you can see that both encapsulation and decapsulation are much slower. And there hasn't been any optimized code for embedded systems uh, written by the bike team. So here is how what we did. Um, we wrote a Haswell implementation and also a N4 implementation, and both implementations are constant time. As you can see, our Haswell implementation is faster than the AVX2 implementation of the bike team, and in particular, uh, our decassulation time is much faster. This is important because decapsulation is the most, uh, is the slowest operation. And our N4 implementation is also much faster than the portable implementation written by the bike team. Here I have to mention that uh, the portable implementation is not fully constant time. Now we can look at bike's specification. Uh, here are the operations uh, that I highlighted in red uh, are operations in the ring R, which is F2x divided by x to the R minus 1. So you can see uh, there are three multiplications here, and although it's not particularly important, uh, each Multiplication involves one low weight operand. Uh, so E1, S0, and S1 are all low weight uh, elements in R. And when we implement, uh, when we implement H0 inverse using Itotsuji, uh, there are going to be more modifications in R. So uh, what I want to say is that uh, there are many modifications in R that we have to perform. And you might wonder that uh, why is Spike a code-based scheme? It doesn't look code-based. Well, uh, in fact, 0 is 0 here is a syndrome. Uh, which means that it's a parity check, uh, the product of a, a parity check matrix and an error vector. And the parity check matrix is a low weight matrix. And just by using the low weight structure, we can already find the error positions, uh, well, at least with certain probability. So here is what uh, you can do. Uh, so you can set uh, an error vector e prime to zero, 
and then for each position i, you count the number of unsatisfied parity checks. If the number of unsatisfied parity checks for a position i is greater than t, then you flip e prime i. If h e prime is equal to s, then you return e prime. Otherwise, you go to step two. This algorithm is uh, not the same as what is specified in Byte's uh, specification, but uh, essentially the decoder used by the Byte team is a variant of this single algorithm. And Actually, uh, as shown in the Chess 2016 paper, Quick Bits, Constantine Smokey Cobase Cryptography, uh, the operation of counting the number of unsatisfied pair checks can be viewed as multiplications in another ring, RZ, which is dy divided by y to the r minus 1. And operands of each multiplication in, uh, in RZ uh, must have coefficients uh, in set of 0 or 1. And also, one of the two operands must be low weight. So, uh, essentially, the multiplications in RZ are similar to the multiplications uh, in R. Uh, that I highlighted in red in the previous slide. So now we know that there are multiplications in RZ and also R, and we can take a look at uh, how we perform the, the multiplications in a high level point of view. Uh, for multiplications in RZ, uh, if the multiplication is between G and F, where G is the low weight uh, operand, then we consider G as the sum of several y to the i's. And then we compute uh, y to the i f for each i, and then we compute the sum of uh, different y to the i f's. Uh, we know that in our implementation, uh, these two operations are interleaved, uh, but conceptually, you can consider them as two different steps. And how do we compute y to the f i f? Well, uh, due to the structure of R D, this is essentially a circular shift on f by i bits. And follow previous papers to perform, uh, to perform logical shifts on f prime. We don't actually perform circular shifts. We, we convert f into f prime and then perform logical shifts. Uh, and here, f prime is essentially a, a duplicated form uh, of the vector f. Uh, regarding modifications in R, what we did. Uh, is simpler. Uh, we basically do a multiplication, a polynomial multiplication, and then modulo x to the r minus 1. So here are our optimizations uh, for multiplications in RZ. Uh, we use the SEL instruction on M4 to perform constant time uh, logical shifts. And on Haswell, we make use of matrix transposition to perform constant time logical shifts. And on both Haswell and M4, uh, when we want to add uh, different y to the i f's, uh, we use an algorithm described by Boyer and Parata. Uh, regarding modifications in R, uh, for Haswell, we use an Ericsson proposed by Bernstein. And on M4, we use so called Forbenius additive FT. Okay, now 
Uh, we can talk about how we use the SEO instruction to perform applications in RZ. Uh, the task here is to shift f prime by s bits, where s is smaller than r. And we consider s as the sum of s1 and s0, where s0 is s mod 32. To shift f prime by s1 bits, we use a barrel shifter, uh, which means that we conditionally shift f prime by some to the k bits, to k minus one bits, and so on, uh, until uh, we conditionally shift f prime by thirty two bits. So here, uh, because each time uh, when we com com compute uh, conditional shift, the shift amount is always a uh, a multiple of 32. Uh, so each conditional shift is simply a sequence of conditional moves of uh, 32 bit words. And this is uh, easy to implement. Uh, for example, the portable implementation of the bike team use uh, a piece of code like this. But actually on M4, you can do better than this because you can just use the SEO instruction to select from one of the two words so that you can you don't have to do multiple uh, logical operations. And if you just, uh, just use SEO instruction directly, uh, then you will see that uh, there are different chains of conditional moves and uh, for each chain if uh, the shift amount is rather large then uh, you will be accessing 32-bit uh, words they are pretty far away uh, which is not very good in terms of uh, performance so we actually combine uh, multiple chains of conditional moves. Uh, we carry out several chains like this in parallel in order to minimize the cost of memory operations. Um, and actually it's very easy to unroll the, the whole loop, uh, but uh, eventually we decided to, uh, to slightly unroll the loop uh, in order to balance speed and code size. And finally, uh, when you want to shift the vector by S0 bits, um, this is very easy to do. You can just do it by using logical instructions. Um, but a better uh, way to do this is to use multiplication and accumulate instructions, such as UMLAO. Uh, we don't talk about this here, but uh, this is written in our paper. Okay, now consider uh, Haswell. Um, our approach for Haswell is a bit different. Uh, we still consider the shift amount at uh, S as the sum of S1 and S0. Uh, and S0, S0 is uh, S mod modulo sum B. And now we consider S prime as a matrix like this. Now, shifting f prime by s0 bits uh, is approximately the same as shifting the rows. Well, you, just, you still have to combine the result of uh, the shifts, but well, basically what you do is to shift the, the, the rows. And in order to be able to shift the rows, it's, it's better to make a m0 row major. And our main observation is that uh, when you want to shift f prime by s1 bits, instead of doing um, barrel shifter, you can actually consider the operation as shifting the columns. Okay. So in order to be able to shift uh, by s1 bits, we store f prime in a row major way. 
And then for each S, we shift the columns by S1 bits, transpose the matrix, and then we shift the prime by S0 bits. And here, multiplication uh, uh, matrix transposition is pretty fast. Uh, you can do like partition the matrix into four pieces and recursively swap the upper right part and the bottom left part. And all this can be done uh, conveniently using logical operations. Uh, for our Haswell implementation, we set B to 256. And we also try the same approach on M4, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to work very well on M4. And we guess this is because uh, it's not very easy to ship by a large uh, uh, number of bits on M4. Okay, now we know how to compute uh, y to the i f for any i. And now the task is to compute the sum of y to the i f. Uh, and if you think about this, uh, the task here is essentially the same as counting the number of ones in r vectors uh, of length uh, of the number of i's. And in the quick bits paper, the author proposed to use bit slicing to do this. Um, and then what you do, you do is essentially uh, mimicking the hardware implementation uh, that perform uh, Hemingway computation. Uh, for example, you can prepare several bits uh, as a counter. And then uh, you, you just keep adding one bit into the counter until you, you uh, finish all the bits. Uh, and th in this way, you will be using only half adders. But actually, it's much more efficient to uh, make use of full adders. Uh, so, Boyar and Parata have shown uh, this in their paper the exact multiplicative complexity of the Hemingway function. Uh, the idea is quite simple. Uh, basically, you, you just perform additions of operands with 2zk minus 1, 2zk minus 1, and 1 bits whenever possible. And just by doing this, uh, we can already save lots of logical operations uh, as shown in this table. And one thing I should mention is that um, the drawback of using this method is that uh, it uses more memory, so it's more like a memory time trade-off. Uh, here is a picture uh, that illustrates uh, the algorithm. Uh, for example, if you want to add uh, 15 bits, I want to compute the Hemingway of this uh, length 15 vector. Then what you, you would do is to uh, add bit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 uh, using full adders. And then you add uh, bit 1 to 7 uh, using uh, two full adders. You add bits A to 14 using two full adders. And then you add uh, uh, bits 1 to 15 uh, using three full adders. Okay, now we can talk about uh, how we perform multiplications in the ring R. And on um, Haswell, um, well, one simple thing you can do is to use Kartuba. Um, so in Kartuba, we write each polynomial f as f0 plus f1d. And we evaluate uh, f at 0, 1, and infinity. And then we do this also for g. And we do uh, a pointwise multiplication. 
and then we do some interpolation in order to get product. And the byte team sets uh, z to x to the k, where k is the power of 2. And for polynomials of length 64, uh, they just use PCO mark dq. And actually, for each of uh, bikes parameter set, r is always approximately 3 times the power of 2 for each parameter set. So, uh, as you can see, uh, the problem here is that f0, f1, and f infinity are not balanced in, ter uh, in terms of lengths. And we also wonder, um, maybe a lower complexity algorithm can perform better because uh, the length of the polynomial are not so short. So we tried uh, another algorithm uh, proposed by Bernstein in his paper Batch Binary Algorithms. Uh, the algorithm has a lower complexity. Uh, so, for every uh, polynomial, uh, the horizon writes uh, f s f zero plus f one z plus f two z squared, and then eva evaluate the polynomial at zero one x x plus one and infinity, and then we do some pointwise multiplication and some interpolation. So. Uh, the incarnation is quite straightforward. We implement the resting solution for the top level of regression. And then for the bottom levels, uh, we just use Kartuba. And uh, one thing that's worth mentioning is that uh, we have to divide it by, we divide polynomials by x squared plus x. And this operation, uh, well, if you do it naively, you can compute each coefficient uh, one by one, but this is very small. A much faster uh, approach is to uh, just add the top half of the polynomial to the bottom half. And you do this recursively. And finally, uh, we can talk about how we do modifications in R on N4. Here, uh, the basic idea is that we want to use additive FTs to do polynomial modifications. Uh, and the, and the operands, uh, here are, uh, binary, are polynomials of binary coefficients. Um, so in additive FTs, uh, you write uh, polynomials f x f of x as f zero x squared plus x plus x f one of x squared plus x, and then by doing this, uh, you will see that uh, we have a very big overlap between the computation of f alpha and f uh, f of alpha plus one. And this is how the recursion works. And uh, if you do this naively, then uh, the resulting algorithm will be not so efficient. So uh, there's an, a, a special algorithm called for Venice additive FT, which tells you that uh, you can reduce the number of evaluation points by making use of the uh, forbearance map. The concept is quite simple uh, because we're dealing with binary uh, polynomials. So we have uh, f of alpha squared uh, must be equal to uh, the square of f of alpha for any alpha in f to the n. And we are not the first one to implement uh, for Bennett's additive FT, uh, but previous implementations uh, 
just use PCL monkey DQ. While on N4, you don't have such uh, convenient instruction for uh, carryless applications. So we have to use pixelizing. And for uh, the representation of the field, um, we the biggest field we, we have to use is uh, F232. And this is built upon uh, a sequence of uh, smaller fields. Uh, we build it from F2 and then F4, F16, and so on. And each multiplication in FAFT uh, is of the form alpha times beta, where beta is uh, V plus W. Here, W is always a uh, subfield element, and B is always a, a constant. In order to optimize uh, this modification, uh, we actually compute alpha times W using Kartuba, and then we compute alpha times V uh, using some sort of uh, circuit generation. Um, because well, multiplication by V is essentially an F2 linear map. And finally, we add the, the result together to obtain alpha times beta. And we found that uh, doing the two smaller multiplication uh, and then add the result together is much faster than uh, doing the multiplication directly. <coughs> And finally, um, we found that uh, Bernstein's algorithm still performs better on Haswell. We actually try the same algorithm on Haswell, but uh, it seems that Bernstein's algorithm is still a bit better. Finally, um, you can find our source code online. Uh, our Haswell implementation is uh, already available in SuperCop. Our M4 implementation is available in PKN4. And both implementations are available in the Artifact, uh, Artifact Archive. So that's all of my talk. Thank you for listening.